Have you heard the term burr? Do you get lost on the amount of R's? Do you want to buy value add property? I'm going to share the keys to burring 101 from a general contractor who has successfully burred properties to help you realize that you can burr too. I'm Tyler Madden. I'm a general contractor who specializes in luxury remodels here in Denver. While running my own business, I also invest in value-add real estate locally with my wife. As you listen, make sure to check out the resources linked below and uh, like and subscribe to Bigger Pockets Rookie Channel so you don't miss a single thing. So you're feeling the burn to burr? Sorry, I'm a relatively new dad and my dad jokes are gonna be coming in hot. It almost feels like when you Google Bigger Pockets, you immediately see the term burr. It's because it's a quintessential investing strategy that you should definitely be aware of and that you can totally do. In the past year, I've personally burred two small multifamily properties and I've made all of my money back and then some. To be honest, now that's all I wanna do because it's such a powerful strategy and it allows you to recycle your money quickly. So let's go through and I'll roll through all the steps and all the R's which will help you get excited and prepared to talk, tackle a burr property of your own. Before all of this, I do have some advice and honestly, it's a piece of advice that I'm trying to get better at myself. You need to start tracking everything as you go through this process. So during your first burr, you're gonna to wanna to create systems during and recap the process after completion so that you can make the last step of this process so much easier. On to the nuts and bolts of the burr. Step one, buy. It all starts with buying a property at the right price. Even with rising interest rates, there are still great deals on the market and opportunities to buy. As long as your analysis is accurate and your costs are accounted for, you can burr in literally any market. It's important to remember that every property has a number that makes it a good deal, and every successful burr starts with getting a good deal. When doing your analysis, one of the most important numbers you need to know is the ARV, or the after repair value of the property. I like to make sure that I can be into the property for 70 to 75% of the ARV. This means your purchase price, your rehab, your holding costs, closing costs, all of this combined should equate to that 70 to 75% of the ARV. You'll see why later. As far as funding the purchase, I use a combination of hard money, private money, and personal money to buy and rehab my deals. It's because generally they close faster and the properties I'm trying to buy might not even qualify for conventional long-term loans. And spoiler alert, you generally want short-term debt to the purchase so you can refinance out of it quickly. Let's get into the first R. Rehab. Your objective in this stage is to make the property worth as much as possible while spending as little as possible, relatively speaking. There are two keys to keep in mind when rehabbing a rental. How significantly do I need to rehab this property? And what rehab decisions can I make that'll add more value than their cost? I'm talking bang for your buck items here. Think kitchens, baths, curb appeal. One massive component of Burr Investments is that you have the ability to increase the value of the property. This means you'll probably end up buying a property that's kind of a dump or at the very least super outdated. So the biggest question to ask yourself in this step is what will affect the appraisal the most? I always like to think that for every dollar I spend on the rehab, I want it to be worth at least $2 in value on the property. So if I go spend $30,000 on a rehab, I wanna increase the value of that property by at least $60,000. Let's get into the second R, rent. You're gonna to wanna to rent out the house after it's rehabbed and you need to make sure that that rental rate you're getting is gonna be able to cover the new mortgage and hopefully cash flow. If cash flow is difficult to get with a long-term rental, remember that there are additional options that involve maybe renting it out as a short-term or a mid-term rental, depending on the regulations relating to those in your city. You may have the option to rent it by the room, even further increasing your cash flow. These are all great options to increase income, but they also require more work, so be aware of what you're signing up for there. Are you looking for a job or are you looking for passive income? If you're new to investing entirely, you'll wanna make sure you find great tenants. Don't be like I was with my first rental and let just the first people who come around move into your beautiful property. There's a good chance they might start a fire and almost burn it down. Ask me how I know this. Anyways, moving on. The third R, refinance. This is the part that makes you all of your money back if you've done everything well. By now you've bought a property, you've gotten a great deal, you've rehabbed it and increased the value a ton and you rented it out for a great profit. Now you need to get traditional long-term loan in place. You'll be doing what's called a cash out refinance and a cash out refinance takes advantage of the equity that you have built in a property by paying you 70 to 75% LTV, which is loan to value. So they'll loan you 70 to 75% of the value of the appraisal. By taking out this new loan, the funds received will be used first to pay off the initial lender and then yourself if you've put money into it. 
If you've created enough equity in the property and it appraises high enough, you can actually get paid and make money. I'll break this down further in an example here in a few seconds, but be careful when choosing how far to push the refinance amount because the bigger the mortgage, the more you'll have to collect in rents in order to cash flow. So you've got to find your happy medium between how much money you recover and how much cash flow you can get. Lastly, and most importantly, you've got to repeat. That's the final R and that's what all the hard work was for. The point of a Burr deal is that you get to recover your money from the deal and leave very little, if any, in the deal and still own a cash flowing property. Now with your money back in your pocket, you get to go do it again and again and again. In order to repeat this, it's important that you work on building systems while you go through the process the first time. Keep track and save everything. Systems will help you accomplish your objectives by repeating the same process over and over and refining it as you go. It'll help you cut down on the mistakes and the stress. The more documented and the more thorough your systems are, the less you'll worry about something being missed, overseen, or totally forgotten about. It all seems too good to be true, right? Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments. Are you fired up, ready to give it a shot? Are you skeptical like a lot of people are? Maybe you just don't trust a guy with a mustache. Let me know in the comments. So I told you I'd go through an example that I've done personally. Um, in the last 12 months, I've burned two small multi-properties in Denver, uh, both a triplex and a quadplex simultaneously. I'm gonna break down the numbers on the quad for you real quick, just so you can see how it all shakes out in the real world. So the first B, we bought a fourplex in Denver straight from the MLS, $598,000. We rehabbed three of the units entirely, top to bottom, knew everything. We ended up putting about $70,000 into the rehab. The next R, we have three renters in place on a long-term basis, and one of the units is a midterm rental with a higher monthly rental amount. We might actually transition more of the units to midterm rentals if the first one continues to perform. If you're not sure what a midterm rental is, generally it's a lease that's for 30 days or more to get around any city regulations against short-term rentals that could be you know, weekends long. The next R is the refinance. When we refinanced, we got our appraisal back at $1.05 million. So we spent $70,000 on the rehab, but we increased the value by $450,000. Remember what I was saying about spending $1 to increase the value by at least two? This is where that really pays off. We took out a new loan for 75% of the appraised value, which was $787,000. With that money, we paid off the hard money, private money, and our personal money that we had invested. We are all into the property for $717,000, including purchase, rehab, holding costs, closing costs, taxes, insurance, etc. All the all the things. That means we're able to actually pull out and get paid an additional $70,000 beyond what we had invested. And we're still cash flowing over $2,000 a month with the higher mortgage. Do you guys see the power of this method? The final R is the best R. Repeat. We're sitting in a good place with all of our capital back and then some. We actually made a bunch of money and we're ready to keep it going. We're currently on the hunt to use this same strategy but on a larger multifamily property. Holler at your boy if you know of any multifamily properties that need, uh, need a value add. I'm your guy. Now you might be saying, wait, 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 you're a GC. That's why this deal is so good. You could self-perform and use your subs. You could save a ton of money. To that I say you are absolutely correct. But what I want you to realize is that you could have actually done this same deal and you could have afforded to pay a contractor that additional $70,000 that I made and you would have still been in this deal for zero dollars. No monies, nada. While it was an exceptional deal for me because of my skill set, it still would have been a great deal even if I had to hire it out and spend 70,000 more dollars. And frankly, in retrospect, I would have rather paid that $70,000 to get it done faster and not have to self-perform nearly as much as I did. So keep that in mind. I'll also add that recovering all of your money from a burr is not the only measure of success here. You can leave money in the deal and still have a great deal on your hands. Don't be discouraged thinking that you failed if you end up leaving any money in the deal. After all, lots of investors are throwing 20% down payments at their investments and they're perfectly happy to do so. I mentioned that I also burred a triplex. In that deal, I left about $20,000 into it. It cash flows like crazy, and that's gonna be paid back in nine months. Tell me that's a bad deal. Explain how that wasn't a success. So be sure to keep your perspective when you're getting involved with burrs. It's not all about a infinite return. So today we learned that in order to burr successfully, it's important to be a general contractor. No, that's not true. In order to burst successfully, you need to start with a property that meets all of your criteria. Understand your market and how much the property will be worth after rehabbing it. Be intentional about who and how you rent the property to. Research your lenders for the refi and use a bank that fits your needs. Text or phone a friend. Get involved with the real estate community. Keep track of your project to create systems, procedures, all the things that can make you better at doing your next burr. Thanks for watching, y'all. 
If you're ready to take the next steps and take on your first or your next deal, go check out the Bigger Pockets Rookie Boot Camp. I'll actually be co-hosting the Rookie Boot Camp with Ashley Care, and you will actually be able to join a huge community of like-minded investors gaining the knowledge and confidence to break into real estate investing. Over the course of several weeks, you'll learn everything to get from none to one or to your next. Be on the lookout for sign up. Fall classes start mid-September and enrollment closes the week prior or when seats are full. Go check out biggerpockets.com backslash classes to learn more. That's biggerpockets.com backslash classes.